Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening to wherever you are in the world. My name is Andrew Glazer, and I'm going to teach you how to find the x-intercepts of a function raised to the sixth power. So first of all, we have to know what we mean by x-intercepts. So just pretend you have a little function here, and the x, well, that didn't really work out as how I planned, but okay, we'll make do. Um, obviously, it's not symmetrical, but don't worry about it. Uh, the x-intercepts now are going to be the locations okay, of the function, that crosses the x-axis. All right. Remember, x is horizontal, y is vertical. Now, it turns out that you do know something very unique about these two points. In other words, these two points have something in common. Do you know what that is? What do they have in common? Well, they have a common y value, right? What's the y value of each of the points? Zero, right? The y value is zero. And that will always be true of every x-intercept. I don't care if you had 14 million x-intercepts. Well, you're going to have 14 million then x values Okay, in which case the y value is equal to zero. Now that's really important because this is going to help you solve it, where that little insight is going to help you solve it. So y is equal to, right, remember, that's the same thing as saying the function's value, and that's going to be equal to zero. This is always true for every single x-intercept. All right, x-intercepts are the values of x or, or coordinates of the points where these functions value cross the x-axis, or in other words, where the y's value or the function's value is going to be zero. Now, what you're going to do, take the zero, plug it on in, okay? Because what I want to do here is I want to find out what do the x values have to be in order for this side now to go to zero, okay? So I set up my equation like this, minus 7x cubed minus 8. Okay, now you might say, all right, uh, yeah, I don't know. Cool, I got it. I don't know where to go from here. That's fine. Let me give you a, let me give you a similar example, okay? So watch. Imagine this was the problem, x squared minus 7x minus 8. What would you now do? You might say, oh, right, I noticed that pattern. It's a quadratic. I can factor it, right? I can. I am asking myself two numbers that multiply to negative 8, but yet add to negative 7, okay? And you're like, oh, right, two numbers that multiply to negative 8, but add to negative 7 is going to be a negative 8 and a positive 1. And then, I'm, and then you're like, all oh, right, I just put my x's in there. Yeah, that's exactly how you do it. So basically what happens here, watch. The same process can happen here. The only difference is these powers, but notice how it goes 6, 3, nothing. Okay? Notice how it goes 2, 1. There's an invisible 1 up there. 2, 1, nothing. Okay? In other words, it goes 6, and then it's half of the 6. It goes to 3, and then it's nothing. In other words, it goes from 2, then it's half of the 2 to 1, and then it's nothing. There's a very similar pattern here, right? Now watch. Basically, when you whatever your leading term is, whenever it's even, you can do this. Assuming you have an even term, then half of the even term over here, and then no term on the outside, okay? This doesn't necessarily work for other problems, where if I had x to the fifth in here as well, this ain't working, all right? Uh, then you might say, well, how do I do that? Well, I'd approach it differently, all right? Different problems require different methods. So, um... What what you're doing here is if, if you know how to handle the x squared, basically all you're going to do is you're going to square root this, right, for x, and that's what's going in each of those x spots, okay? Same principle is going to happen here. You're going to use the same factoring method. You're going to have a minus 8 here and a plus 1 over here, but it's not going to be x and it's not going to be x. It's going to be x cubed, and it's going to be x cubed, okay? You're going to square root whatever this thing is, and that's going to be your leading coefficient in both cases, okay? Now, you can also check yourself if you wanted to, you know, uh, expand on that. If you want to do x cubed times x cubed, what's that going to be? x to the sixth. Great. x cubed plus 1. Well, that's just x cubed. Negative 8 times x cubed is negative 8 x cubed. And that math would work out to be negative 7 x cubed if you combine it. And then negative 8 multiplied by positive 1 is negative 8, right? So this, this should make sense. So now, when you got it down to this part... This should be lovely. The reason why is because now this is the part where you can really begin to understand how to solve the problem, okay? You notice you have two terms and they're multiplied together, right? These two terms are going to be multiplied together. If this term becomes zero, or if at some point I want to figure out what x is in order for this thing to become zero, then what do you know about this whole side? What does that whole side have to become? It has to become zero as well, right? It has to become zero, okay? What about now... That's great. So if this thing goes to zero, oops, this whole side goes to zero. But what about this term? 
Well, the same thing happens. If this term somehow goes to zero, I could care less what's inside this, and this whole side's gonna go to zero, right? And you can already think about, what does x have to be here? What does x have to be, ladies and gentlemen, so that this side goes to zero? What do you think? Well, it could only be an x value of negative one, right? Because negative one times negative one times negative one is a negative one, and a negative one plus a positive one is zero. That whole thing's going to zero, so I could, when this is negative one though, Right, this is negative one times negative one times negative one, that's a negative one, negative one minus eight is gonna be negative nine, right? Negative nine multiplied by zero, guess what? Is zero, right? So I know that that's one of the values. And then I could look at it over here and think the same thing, okay? I'm gonna think the same thing. Now I'm trying to think, well, what does X have to be? Well, I'll try one, one doesn't work, negative one doesn't work. Why? What about two? Two times two is four, and then times another two is gonna be eight, and eight minus eight is zero. And this whole thing's gonna to go to zero. I could care less what this is, and this is, what what is this term gonna be? Well, this is gonna be two times two times two, which is gonna be eight plus one, so that's a nine. So when you take zero and multiply it by nine, you get a zero, right? You can think this through if you want. You don't have to show all, well, I mean, for me, you don't have to show all the work. I'd rather you think it through, right? I'd rather you think this thing through, all right? Uh, I mean, you might have to show it on a test or whatever, you gotta show the work. Right, but uh, I'd, I'd I'd rather take someone who can think rather than somebody who who can just you know repeat some math process. Okay, uh, so those are the roots. Now you might say, oh man, I hope no 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 no, give me the work, Andrew. I'm gonna give you I'll I'll give you the work right now. Okay, I'll give you the work right now. So how we set this up now, even though we already have the answers, right? We would set this up by kind of just formulating a math problem. We're saying somehow I want this thing to be equal to zero. So how do you set that up? Well, x cubed minus eight equals zero, right? You break this up into two parts now. Then the second part is x cubed plus one. I want that to become zero. Solve this now. Add eight on both sides, right? x cubed equals now eight, okay? If you were to take then the cube root of both sides or raise both sides to the one third power, you would realize that this has to equal two, right? You can check it in your calculator. Watch, go to math. Get the cube root number four, all right, and then hit eight. Hit enter, two, okay? Come back over to here. Minus the one on both sides, so you got x cubed equals negative one. You can take the cube root of a negative number. It's not like a square root where this would be illegal, okay? Well, I mean, you're not gonna get arrested for it, but you might fail the test. Um, so just do it again. Go to, not second, but just hit math, right? Go to four, type in negative one, hit enter. Oh, look at that, negative one, okay? But that's what we said logically before. Those are the values, okay? Now you might say, wow, this was nice, great, okay? But I still don't quite understand. I mean, eh, you know, I, I get it, but I need, a, I need a visual. Well, great. Go plug it into the calculator. Watch, x to the sixth, hit over, then minus now, okay? 7x cubed, raised to the third, then hit over, then minus 8. Graph the bad boy. There it is, right? Here it is. Now, now remember, we defined the x-intercepts as the locations of the values of x that cross the x-axis. Each one of these tick marks represents one unit. So if you count to the left, one unit, that's a negative one. If you count to the right, two units, that's a positive two. Wow, right? Look at that, beautiful. And then you can also use your table if you wanted. If that, if that you know, wasn't cool enough, you can use your table. And I got mine incremented by, it doesn't really matter here, this is good enough, but I got mine incremented by a half. So, but if you notice, remember we defined the x-intercepts of the, uh, the x-intercepts as the x values, right? When the y's value zero. So negative one and two, and notice it's the same thing, all right? So there's so many ways to kind of check yourself here, uh, but that, that's the idea, right? I hope in this process, I taught you how to think through the problem. I don't want you to just like memorize something. I want you to think. I want you to be able to think how to approach a problem. Okay? So, guys, thanks for tuning in. I do hope this helps. If it does, press the buttons. You know what to do. Like, subscribe, and definitely help us spread the word. Tell some of your classmates. And also check out our channel, by the way, because we got other videos. We Physics, chemistry, solve specific problems. It's the best way to really learn, right? You want to do a ton of practice problems on your own, all right? And then if you have a little trouble, you need help. Watch the video. Watch the videos. All right. We got solve specific problems out there. And the, because uh, quite honestly, right, what are you going to see on your test? <laughs> problems. Okay. You're going to see word problems. You're going to see multiple choice problems. All right. Uh, we, we take a very applied uh, approach here. So without further ado, I bid you farewell. <laughs>